Hi, everyone. So we're just coming up at the top of the hour at noon. Um, we will get started in just a few minutes, um, allow time for people to uh, log in. So in about a few moments, um, we'll get started. So if you're here now, welcome. Hi everyone, um, it's just turned at 12 o'clock noon and we are gonna wait a few more moments as people transition to joining in on the link. And uh, we'll just uh, let a few more moments pass before we get started. Okay, so we are going to get started and uh, and then of course we will be recording this so that people um, can revisit it or you can share with colleagues for those that um, did, weren't able to attend at this time and that's absolutely okay we are all busy my name is bill corcoran i am a coordinator with learning technologies on the pedagogical and academic side so i don't know too many technical answers but from experience i'll try to help you but um, from the teaching standpoint i will always be there to help you try to use the technology purposely. And so I will, um, in a few moments, introduce one of my colleagues who's on this call, Catherine. Um, and so we'll, I think we'll just do uh, our prayer first and welcome, and then we'll get her to pop in. And she'll be here to help support us um, now and then with uh, the question period on the Google Meet drop-in afterwards. So thank you for taking the time to join us today. Uh, we are all busy, and we are all trying to find our way, and so we appreciate it. Of course, as always, we respectfully acknowledge that we are on located on the ancestral, traditional, and unceded indigenous territory of the Algonquin peoples on whose territory we pray, learn, play, and uh, work. So um, as we slipped over here, uh, one of the themes that uh, we had through CLL at our, with our principals was the, the terminology just breathe. And uh, in the webinar this morning with Catherine at the uh, K to three level, um, she reemphasized that. And for myself, um, I had that planned and I will do a little prayer over top of that, but I will uh, pause for a few moments just to ground ourselves um, and come back into the moment and, and know that we're here together as, as a Catholic community and a community to um, support each other uh, through this. So now we think of any um, intentions that we ha may have in our hearts and our minds um, to think of them as we lift them up to the Lord and um, I go in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of hope, comfort and restore all who suffer in body, mind or spirit. May they know the power of your healing love. Make us willing agents of your compassion and strengthen us as we share in making people the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so before I get into the agenda, I will um, ask uh, Catherine to pop on mute and on your video if she wishes to uh, come in and say hi. Hi, everybody. I'm Catherine. Uh, I am one of the LT consultants, and I'm excited to be here, and I'm so excited that you're here to join us. Perfect. Thanks, Catherine. I appreciate you being here to support myself and uh, the learning community, and uh, we'll cross paths, and she'll, she'll be my... Uh, She's, we called a co-pilot this morning, and uh, and she'll make sure that uh, we cover the information we need to. So anything I miss, she will be there, and anything we both miss, we will be there to answer your questions on um, the chat afterwards. So we'll continue to move forward. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on uh, the slide deck that I'm casting right now, because obviously I'm going to show you the live environment of Haparo Workspace. Um, but I will give you an overview right now. So obviously we're doing the welcome and the intro. A little bit of an overview and then the vernacular, which is just how we describe APARA. And then how do we support uh, ourselves and parents moving forward? And then we some of the questions that we have, well, of course, um, this being a live stream will not uh, occur during this session, but afterwards in the Google Meet link, which is also found on your document that you have handy from learning technologies that you received through the PD day. So first of all, um, I always have this at the end of the slide, but I thought that I would put this up at the uh, front as well, because 
we try our best to communicate um, our learning and the, the information and examples of how to use workspace and uh, that's why you're here but sometimes uh, we go too fast or you want to do you want to see a concept again so like I mentioned um, this is being recorded and you can always come back to it we do have micro learning videos uh, on our how to site and um, you can't access this slide deck but I will show you how to get to the OCSB how to site in just a moment if you want to come back to it and then of course um, we have lots of resources and supports through our learning technologies team and across capacity across the system so um, I will give you permission at any point if I'm going too fast or you feel flustered in the moment you can always take a pause and just breathe um, for yourself and come back to it and we will always be there to support and we'll give your contact information for your family schools learning technologies uh, uh, consultant as we move forward and the other thing I want to speak to before um, is that we do have a lot of capacity and just I will emphasize and um, preface that just because you may not have a badging or a certification about doesn't mean that you don't have a lot of experience and you're not a wealth of resource but the reason why I do show this is not to push the um, certification process because um, that's an individual choice but I wanted to show that there are um, many 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 people in our building um, who continue to go along the learning journey with you and us and uh, there are people that are willing to learn si alongside you um, whether virtually or in your building so please know that they are there um, and if not if you don't know who they are you can uh, definitely reach out to your um, consultant as well okay so before we jump into some of the resources and building our workspace I really wanted to look over the vernacular of Hapara and Hapara workspace in our overview and why video for the PD day this may be repetition but it is so important uh, to us and to our students and to our families that we know um, the language of Hapara and so in this case of course we are looking at Hapara workspace or workspace and as we go into the student view of things, as we uh, show you a little bit about that, we know that there's an, an, another language that pops for the workspace is student dashboard, which leads to the workspaces for the students. But I think we are safe if, if we say Hapara workspace or it's in your workspace, not it's in Hapara, because that leads us down a different road. Okay, so I'm ready, let's build, but I'm gonna jump in before I get in there to some of the resources that we referred to so that um, if you do wanna have those handy as we go through. So first of all, my entry point is always, in a lot of cases, the staff portal. So staff.ocsb.ca, I bookmarked it into my bookmark bar. And you will see that um, the OCSB how-to, you say, okay, Bill, Bill where is that? Um, I will direct you to the professional learning which is an extra click, so I, I do recommend kind of maybe saving it for yourself in that bookmarks bar as well. And then across the top, we do have wellness and safety, important communication, which is important, and educating students, which is also important. They're all important. And then you have tools and tech under the dropdown. Under the tools and tech, you will go to the site that the, uh, a lot of the learning technologies team um, updates frequently and links us to um, some resources that you would have. So LT News and updates. And then if you have information about Meets and Hapara and Book Creator and so forth, um, they are on this page. But they're also linked into the OCSB How To channel. And when you click on this link right here is what I referred to, is all those micro learning videos that we've attached in playlist form. So videos for students and um, videos for parents and guardians, um, which I'll refer to later about how do they get into a workspace and, and their dashboard. There are videos in there that we could just send the link to them. And then of course we have webinars and then there is a playlist specific to um, leveraging Hapara, which is today. So if I view the full playlist, not just play all, I can view the full playlist, is then we get into all these little videos that our awesome LT team has created in the OCSB2 space, how uh, to space. And in here, we also have linked some videos directly from the vendor because we know things change quite often. So we want to keep on top of uh, those slight changes, but you will see some videos from Apara in there. Okay, so I just wanted to kind of give some context of some pieces um, that we will be referring to. And now we are going to uh, jump into uh, our workspaces and I do want to emphasize as we go in I'm going to get to the staff portal and you will see Hapara dashboard and workspace 
I'm going to click on the word workspace right now just to bring us right to our workspace area. And this is what I see when I come in. So today, uh, a lot of my examples uh, will be directed at the grade four to six panel. Um, I myself, and uh, from experience in the classroom, um, taught junior myself for at least 10 years. And um, so a lot of examples can come from uh, what I've seen, but also what I've experienced personally. But they are examples. How you choose to use this tool, Workspace, is how you um, choose to use it. It is so dynamic to what you want to do. So I'm going to do my best to bring uh, relevant classroom examples. But again, um, this is not uh, a telling you how to do it. This is just ways you could say, well, I like what you're saying, Bill, but I would do it this way. Well, then that, of course, you can um, use it from that. So what I see when I hear right now is my landing page for workspaces. And when I come in, I can see owned by me. So that's ones that I've created personally. Um, ones that are shared with me. So those are ones that have been shared with me, just like a, a Google Doc. Um, somebody had created a workspace on their own and shared you as a collaborator or co-teacher. My labels is something new that we might get back to. It could be a Q&A uh, near the end, just how it's kind of a, a helpful piece to organize and professional learning. So when you come in as a learner, um, what does that look like coming in? If somebody shared you as a, a participant in one, maybe it was your principal or somebody in LT that was running a session for you. So those are some things that you see. And um, across the top, there's the Discover tab, which we will come back to um, later, which is kind of a good repertoire of um, created workspaces. And there is some that are being uh, created from Hapara and with um, through our LT uh, team and the board um, are creating workspaces that um, you will be able to discover in there. But for now, we're going back into what do we need to do to kind of start the September um, school year. That's all our task is. We have enough going through us. And um, when we talked about grounding ourselves, sometimes we see workspaces that have been built up over time and it looks really dynamic and really long. And that is, those are awesome workspaces. There's no question about it. But that's not our entry point because the great thing about workspace is that it's meant to uh, start somewhere. And this is the starting somewhere by putting in a card, by um, putting one or two items in there and then calling it a day. So at one point in about five or 10 minutes, I'm gonna say, okay, well, that's what we came here for. So I don't know how long this um, live stream is gonna go for, um, but then I will go in and say, okay, well, how can we start using the tool in different ways? And that's where my practical examples um, from some of these grades might come through. So let's start uh, creating one. Up at the top right is plus create. And um, in true uh, leveraging digital form, um, after we've, we created all the micro learning videos for the PD day. Um, Hapara shifted some of their platform. So new to us as of, I believe, last Monday, this past Monday, was uh, this pop up when you clicked on create. Before, it would just, you click create and it would just be give your workspace a title and move forward. Anything related for our students, it's labeled, uh, labeled for students right here as we move forward. For professional learning would be um, not what we're talking about right now, but would be, like I mentioned, um, if our colleagues wanted to put us in as learners, whether you're principal or you're taking um, a professional development uh, workspaces that we wanted to share with colleagues. But for now, we're only focused on the four student piece, so I'm going to click it. It will prompt you to give uh, a title, and so I'm going to put this, um, I'm going to put this as uh, Kitty. Um, not PD workspace, I'm going to put it as uh, school year startup 2020. I might call it Mr. C school year startup. Right here, I have the opportunity to choose a class, um, and I would recommend just choosing one class at this moment in time. If you don't have any classes for some reason here, whether you may not be scheduled in at the moment in Power School and Power Teacher with classes and students, you can choose. I will create my own groups um, instead of having them automatically generated per class. If I cl click on this class right here, which I had renamed on my dashboard as well as Language Arts, if I click on that and I can give a description later, 
when it creates it, it will have all my students as one group. If I choose this box and override it, I will create my own groups. It will have no groups and no students in there. But that's a simple process that I will show you um, after that we can look at. So I'm going to click on the class that automatically creates it. Description, I can create that description. And if I don't, I can come back to it. And here is something that when we look at the student view, um, it will, uh, we now have the opportunity to bring in images. And these are all royalty-free images. So if you click on them and you put them on, um, we're not worried about that copyright piece. And you can obviously search between uh, these pieces here and, um, in terms of different subjects and uh, themes. So I'm going to click on technology and computer studies. So maybe it's uh, this one right here. And you can kind of move it around and you can resize it a little bit, which is which is handy. And then back to the image library. So I'm going to I'm going to click save. And this is helpful because when we actually log into the student view, um, this will be on the side of their student dashboard, and it will help them. You could say, well, go to the one with the image of the uh, laptop or the Chromebook on it, and then I'm going to save as draft. Anything we are creating right now is not live for the students until we hit the word publish at the, at the top. So let's enter in here. We have four columns. Right now, they are named as goals, resources, evidence, and rubrics. And those can change um, depending on what it looks like in your class. So some people could be, it could be a simple change as maybe it's learning goals. Um, that's a, a change. Here could be resources or um, links. It could be something like that. And then evidence. Um, some people put in show, show your learning or something that makes sense to the language of uh, of your class as well. But for this one, I'm really kind of using this, this example as more of a, like I said, a startup. I haven't named a subject. I'm really trying to bring it forth as a place to, to go. Some of the messaging that we've received is that uh, we need to kind of bring together the possibility of whether I'm a, if I'm a classroom teacher in person at a school, that there may be interruptions to what our workflow looks like in terms of my class. Maybe I, I need, there might be a student at home, um, it might be our class at home, or uh, it could be our school at home. So in here, we kind of want to have ourselves ready within the workspace environment as well. But let's start simple. And uh, in here, there is a, a toggle on here, which will kind of start showing a little bit of what it looks like. And um, I'm just going to start with focusing on uh, this being my workspace and what I would use this for for parents. And that's where I was getting at in just a few moments ago as I got sidetracked was that we really need um, the opportunity for our, our parents to know where their student learning activities are. And uh, that is not taking away teacher choice and teacher voice. Um, what it is, it's just allowing people to flow through workspace so that when we communicate with um, with parents and we say, oh, you know, this activity has been updated. Um, they know it's been that it's in the workspace or if they have to go somewhere else, um, whether it's a link to an awesome uh, software or different things that you have that you're familiar and comfortable with, um, it just needs to flow through um, the workspace that we that we have right here. So for this today, I'm going to uh, just going to put this and I might have a welcome. So I've, what, I've, what I thought to myself, what would I do um, in terms of what I have a workspace just for a welcome and updates? Um, I'm kind of thinking about this live as we go through on live stream and just thinking about what is it that I really want to get to. Do I want to have a workspace just for um, logistics um, and uh, different things from that? And then is there a workspace for uh, different subjects or am I doing so uh, weekly? When I click on plus create a card, it obviously will prompt. Um, a title. So in this case, I will put um, the word welcome. So then all of a, all of a sudden, um, the title learning goals doesn't make sense up there because I've decided in the moment that I'm going to put welcome um, from here. And in here, I might put uh, uh, logistics or, or just the word welcome. It's just one thing right now. Maybe I'll stick with the word logistics to what I got there. Um, and in here, when I go back to edit, because as soon as you click off, it goes away. I'm going to 
go to my Google Drive. A lot of these things that I've, I'm going to put in here, I've created in Google Drive before. So that's the key thing here. I kind of think about what I wanted in there because a lot of these pieces just become how do I want to emphasize the use of, of Google in there. So when we are using Google, a lot of people, I'm just going to drag this, uh, this in here to kind of show you what I kind of prepared. So you should be able to see that. So imagine on a Google Doc, I spent the time in my Google Drive maybe writing a welcome message. And uh, uh, I've linked it in a Google Doc. And I put an image on there. And I kind of feel like this is us and a lot of, a lot of pieces on there. We've got that little PPE. I know it's a, <laughs> it's a pet door there, but kind of blocking ourselves on there and kind of peering out. We're ready to go out and, and, be, and be ready for this. But I've created, in a long story, this in a Google Doc. I'm ready to um, insert this into my workspace, because that's when I want my student coming in or parents through their child's account, because we want them to flow through their child's account. I want to link this into my Google, um, my Haparo workspace. A lot of people like taking this uh, URL and dropping it over. And unless there's permissions changed and it's what you want, we do get a lot of uh, questions to our LT team about, well, it's not working. You get requests for edit, all those type of things. So I always say that, one, I, I'm remembering what I've called it, and two, Anything that is housed in our Google Drive and is Google, I would recommend going in through this Google Drive icon and clicking on that and searching. Sometimes um, it doesn't show up per perfectly in terms of recent history. So I'm going to put um, welcome message, because I know that's what it was, and just search. Pop up. And usually, because I was just in that document, I just opened it. I didn't really do anything. It's there. I'm going to click on um, Select. And now it's in there as a document. And here, put welcome message as my title. And here, I'll put a, I could put a description or not. And you can say, please um, click on the link uh, or doc below to see my welcome message. And right now, as I go down to the bottom, I click Done. And right now, it's it's got a white background. Uh, right now, some people ask about how do we get those nice headers. Right now, this is not the focus of this session. Um, but we can definitely support you in LT about that. But if I did want to change the color, I could change the color by clicking on the three dots. Instead of clicking Edit, I've changed the, um, the color of the background here. So that's one piece of it. And so that's a welcome message. And then um, I might put resources um, or weekly agenda. So I'm thinking to myself, like, what is it that's something that I'm, I might also share with parents, but also want to direct them into here? So for the student, um, if they needed to on that, because we're not all having a lot of paper and pencil moving back and forth across. Uh, in our school bags on a day-to-day on -day basis based on all our protocols. So in here, I've also created um, a weekly agenda. And in this is a um, Google uh, Slides. And I just used one of the templates and quickly added some text boxes. And there was already two of them, so I just moved them. And this could be the week of, I'm just looking at my calendar. I think it's September. The next week, it doesn't matter really what week it is. If you're starting at the beginning, of course, we're there. We all just grounding myself. We're not, yeah. So the eighth to the eleventh is what I was thinking. And you might put um, some summaries on here, or just the bullet points of what it is of an overview of the week. Of course, all these learning activities. That's the language that comes from the blueprint um, for return to work for staff. These learning activities are going to be in your workspace. So this is really not a place for a bunch of links. To me, if I was going to do this, it would just be a summary for the parent and the student of something that uh, they know is going to be in their workspace. But I think more so potentially for, for the parent in the cases, because otherwise, the workspace will do the talking for the student. But what I wanted to bring this up is because uh, when I go back to my workspace, anything that I've created and put into a card, such as that Google slide, can be updated via my Google Drive. So I could always, I could link this in my Google, um, into my workspace, sorry. So I'm going to click on Create a Card. I'm going to put 
weekly agenda. And I'm going to click on the Google Drive icon, and I'm going to search weekly agenda. Usually, um, I kind of copy and paste from the title on the Google Doc or slides or whatever. And there it is. Click on select. Maybe I'd give a better title like weekly agenda, Mr. C class or something. But when I click on done, maybe I'll get the same color. No matter when the um, student or the parent through the student's account or you go into that document in the slides, it will always be live because I've linked it in there. And it will be all groups. And it's not an evidence. I'm not making copies. I'm not doing anything. So really, this is a resource. It's a link. And so if I click on it now, as a teacher, I go into that weekly agenda. And I can, I can edit it because it's part of my Google Drive. So when I linked it, I only had week of uh, September 8th to 11th. And you can actually see that my other um, window is open there still. And then I had week of September 2nd, which is not true right now. So I could say next week. If I wanted to, I could uh, duplicate the slide and just have that as a master template that I move on. So now I have three um, slides, but I'm really right now just working inside Google Slides and my Google Drive. So some, the, the best part about this is that I can go back here and I never have to continue adding that, that agenda slide, ever, slide deck every week. It's just there. So when they go in, they know it's there. They click on it. And I only have to ever update it in my Google Drive. So that's what we wanted you here, that the simplicity in what this looks like for, for ourselves and why we would link it to it in such a way to make our workflow uh, easier. So that's why. So right now, I've spent this time, and I've done a lot of talking surrounding it. But you can see that most of my most of my work was done by creating some templates in Google Drive first, or my messaging. But the creation of the workspace itself wasn't that difficult to come in and create a couple of cards. So people do say to me, um, well, what does this look like from the student view? And I will log into the student experience in just a few moments because I'm about, I'm almost at that 10, 15 minute mark where I said, this can be as simple as it is as part of our journey. You can come in, get some resources to link in there. This may not be your learning activities yet, but you started the logistic process of getting people in there to know where the information is. And in junior, um, we would tend to use it more um, than possibly uh, as people are learning it in different grade levels, um, as we were discussing this morning in K-3. So we will evaluate, well, how, do we need a workspace by, by week or by subject um, or by strand? Um, and those are some things we'll talk about as we move through. But what does the student see? I'm going to look here. I'm going to expand. This close shows up as my students and groups, which was up here. Remember when I clicked on the one class as I was creating my workspace? I did not click on I'll create my groups later. Um, it already automatically created a group for me, and all my students were in there. So that's what this is, and that's what you see right here is one group with all my students in it. And if I hit that and look at the little arrow, um, that's on there, and you expand it, you'll see all your students with a little um, eyeball. And so some people say, well, what is it that my students actually see in the moment? And this is um, what it is. And so we don't have the ability for us to go in as students. And you can see by me only putting items in the first two columns, you cannot see the third and fourth column right now. You cannot see that third and fourth column. So you can streamline what they see. But they will see what class that it is part of. And if you have, if you go down the journey of, of due dates, which we, when we get into maybe the more content uh, learning activities, you'll see it. And then any, any teacher that is, is part of that uh, workspace. But this one will say you are previewing as student 1717. You will see their name. For us, we have, um, you might hear the word sandbox later on. And a sandbox is something you play in. And because um, as part of the LT department, we don't have any classes in PowerSchool. You might hear the word sandbox for us with 20 different students labeled as such. But you will see your student name up there, no worries. So a lot of people like that. Well, what is it they see? Because they like to see what it is that, and how it kind of shows up. And that is a great feature that Hapara brought in to the mix. So I'm back here. And um, I'm getting ready to go. So that's what the student sees. and um, But right now, they don't see it. 
So student 17, if they logged in, I'm going to, um, while we're talking, I, I'm going to open it up one of our sandbox um, students and I'm going to bring this over to the screen, which you should be able to see. It's dragging across. Awesome. And in here, you will see that I've logged in as a student to any of the, I'm going to see up here if I can get uh, signed in. Just notice, notice that it paused and I will come back to it as I uh, remember the password. I do have it down. So I will try to remember that on the top, not during the live stream. So I should have checked that before and we will be good to go. Um, so the student experience right now is that they, uh, they will go to the, their school um, website and they can click into the link, but this should also pop up when they log in to their, um, their device. So whether a Chromebook or they, they go into their student profile as they, as they move forward as well. And so when they look in here um, and see this, they will see all their options and really what we're directing them to is, um, is to the student portal, whether it's, we're talking about grade four to um, six, of course, in the junior grades. And um, if you're at the high school level, um, you'd go in a different one. So thank you for, as I get logged in, sometimes the Google does uh, get us to re-sign in, that's good. Um, but in the middle of a live stream, that is always uh, something that jogs your memory. And it's like asking somebody's birthday on the spot. Um, you kind of forget, even though I do that, I log into it all the time. <laughs> anyway, so we're here. So I'm get the student to come in and click on Workspace and Student Dashboard. In those playlist videos that I mentioned on OCSB How To, this shows the experience for the student and is on there. And you can share those links directly um, with, your, with your parents and students. And you're also more than welcome, if you're comfortable, to um, create a little screencastify of what it, and include that link. And so this is what it is and make it and personalize it to your class. Of course you are. So I'm looking through here and I'm clicking on CEC training one and I've told my student that I've created a welcome workspace, but I do not, um, I do not see it. And so that is an issue at the moment, but it's a simple uh, fix is because I have not published my workspace. So when we create a workspace, it is um, private to me as it was labeled as draft form, just like we create a Google Doc. It is not live. You have to type somebody's name in to share it, or you have to change the settings of the link and make it public or live um, in a sense. And that's what Hapara Workspace is right now. So right now, the student is not seeing it in their, in their view as well. So I'm going to just kind of flip back to my view as a teacher. And uh, so the, again, this is the teacher view. Up at the top, I click on Publish to 20 Learners. And student 17 is part of that class. Now, if student 17 logged in um, at the moment, uh, they may not see it right away. They may have to refresh their screen and re-come re into that process and make sure that it is uh, there for themselves. So I'm going to replicate the experience and just drag in the student view again. I find dragging it in kind of as a nice cue that we're now actually in the student portal. So we are in the student portal, in a K-6 student portal. And there's the vernacular of workspace and student dashboard. So within the student dashboard is workspaces um, for that student. If I click in, if everything has gone correctly, you will see that, okay, there's Mr. C, school year startup 2020, which is great. And we can um, reference that, oh, it's the one with the Chromebook in it. Um, so please look for that picture. And if we did put a description in there, which is might be handy for you, um, you can adjust it and it will show up just below, but you can see that it does cut off. So it does have to be more precise uh, doing that. Right now they're showing all the recent workspaces. And if they click on all my classes, they can sort down to CC training one, which would say their class. And now it's just the ones that we've looked at. So if they click on that, they log in and the view that they're going to see is the view that we saw in the eyeball um, feature in the teacher Part of their workspace when they were creating. They can click on the welcome message. And you can see that they're seeing. And again, it's a Google Doc. So if I ever wanted to add to it as a teacher, it's just in Google. But the student doesn't have access to it to type on it. And um, they cannot change it. And they can request that added access. So that's why we would use the third column. Um, we're going to talk about that in just a few moments. And uh, 
if they wanted their own copy to do work on. And the same here, the weekly agenda is across the top. And it's view only, you can see at the top and anything that was typed in there. And uh, when I published it, there was only two slides. Now there's three, it's because it's just Google now. That's all we're doing. You can even see read and write popped up. So there's a lot of features in read and write that we could, we could use. Um, if I would use read and write more so in, in a Google Doc. It's a little bit more dynamic in that way, but uh, it's definitely helpful across this platform for sure. Okay, so student view, I'm in. I'm going back to my dashboard, and I'm going to pause uh, for the moment. And I think I'm going to prompt to see Catherine if there's something at that point, because I'm ready to that to our point of saying, you know what, this is our getting a couple cards in there and keeping it simple. Um, is there anything that, as just in terms of this point, that we think we wanted to ground our our junior colleagues with? No, I think everything's good. Okay, yep. awesome. So yeah, so this is where we're kind of saying like if, without going past now, this is the permission piece for you. If you wanted to pause or, well, I guess you can pause in the live stream, but if you wanted to, to kind of just say, I'm good right now. Um, I, this is what I want to do to get started. But we haven't talked about learning activities yet, but the concept is the same. So if you would like to stick on for just a few more moments without feeling overwhelmed, I'm going to show you what it looks like in an evidence card, which means that learning activity of how the student can start sharing um, their ideas and obviously their learning um, with us. So in this case, I'm going to reset myself. And now we're going to give into, get into some practical um, examples of what and how some people have been using this tool. And again, it is not um, every way. So please um, use it in a way that makes sense to you. So I'm going to go to plus create. And I'm going to start um, with, uh, let's see, let's see, I'm going to start with grade four, I think. And I'm going to create one for students. And I'm going to call this um, grade four, light, and And I'm going to choose my class here, which is CEC train two, because maybe that's actually named as science. It would be in your account. And here, I'm going to click on the icon. And of course, I'm looking up here for science. That's good. And uh, oh, that molecule, let's see if we can find one. I'm surprised there isn't a picture of that COVID-19 piece that is everywhere. Um, Let's see if we can just search it. Light and sound. Sure. I mean, everyone looks OK. This, this could be something that makes sense. I'll choose a better one maybe later. And then up here, um, we could say grade four science unit on light and sound. So right now, right off the bat, you know that I've chosen to uh, make a workspace per strand in science. So I've chosen this right knowing from my experience and what people see is that if I start with one workspace for science in general, it gets big really quickly. So um, it might be advantageous if you are going by a strand route um, and subject route to start there. Of course, we do have goals um, and we have different sections on here. We're back into the same kind of entry point as we were before. So in here, I'm not going to stick to the stop, top piece of um, this, this column right now. But in this add section, we might have um, some uh, the ability to use sections in here. And it's helpful because these sections can pop up and down. And you can always have the most relevant one at the, um, at the top um, and moving uh, forward for you. And so if we um, had gone in here and you were you were looking at creating that, you could for sure um, use that to differentiate your topics in here. And that's what I'm going to do today. And this is going to be more of an independent type of um, example. So you just want to get information in and everybody's going to get their um, copy. And so we could um, have a section here that we started typing as in light. And I'm going to hit enter. And down here, there's an opportunity to make another section called uh, sound. And for some reason, if I wanted sound to be first, as I hover over these gray bars, I can actually plop them down and they flip. So if you're using this more of an agenda base, or if you're kind of saying this is week one, week two, you can always bring the most relevant one up to the top 
and uh, teaching that way. So that is something that you could do um, if you wanted to separate um, resources. So you could say sound resources, um, and you could say light um, resources. But for the example and the timing of this work, um, of this today, is that we are going to um, just put in an evidence card in here just to show you what it means um, for us. And so I've created this slide deck, and it's not pretty. Um, it's just a, a skeleton. Um, and I guess that descriptor for a skeleton would be good for my next example of human organ systems in the human body. But this one basically had a title page um, and has a, a slide for light and sound. So for this one, it could be as simple as me thinking that I wanted to give somewhere for the student um, to independently, as they learn, put information in regarding those um, subjects and those topics. And they can, because it's a slide deck that would be open in them in their own copy, they can add more slides as needed so it's not restricted to this, but it's kind of a template that would give them to a graphic organizer, um, if you will. And so this one I've created, and for today, I'm just gonna click on the evidence um, card. When I click on evidence, you're gonna see very much um, that it's like what we showed you in the goals and resources or the, the agendas from before. So I'm gonna put grade four, light, and sound um, learning. And if I click on the Google Drive icon, I'm gonna make sure it's gonna be, I'm gonna put grade four, and it did pop up there. I just clicked too quickly, light and sound, and I click on select. When I add that, um, that slides template in there, it's gonna ask me, do I want a copy per student or a copy per group? The example that I'm going to give you um, today is uh, for this grade is by student. Literally, I just want them to go in and get a copy of this slide deck, and I want them to independently start typing in it. So this may make sense to an example, but the context and the concept is the same. So no matter what you're thinking, if you want them to get a copy of something, you're building the template, whether it's science or not, um, and moving it forth into there. So copy per student. I'm not focused 100% in here in the scheduled start date, but if I do choose this one, it will um, not show up in their workspace till that time. So we do get some questions about how could I do my work on prep or at home two days in advance, but it not show up in a live workspace. That is one of them. And um, different types of groups, uh, grouping features, such as a ghost group, where we've created an independent group and tagged that to uh, that independent group, um, could hide a card. But that's beyond the basics for, for today. So I do just want you to know that that's an option. But please don't, uh, that could be one of your breathe, pause moment activities where you just kind of let it go from your brain um, from that from that moment, and that's OK. For um, if this was something that you wanted to show, because um, in the junior, they kind of were, were continuing to work on that, um, that ability to organize themselves and have parents come in and give them a little sense of, you know, OK, this is a learning activity, but I really want a sense of like, do I need to have something done by a certain time or of learning? And that would be all in how you describe it and share information. But let's say, you know, I really wanted to have something in there by Friday 20, uh, 25th, and I'll show you why that's a little bit handy. You can already see that there's something on the side for the teacher dashboard, or the teacher view, sorry, of workspace, not teacher dashboard. Caught myself on that own wording. Um, and you can see that all I've done right now, and I might change the color, I have not published. So I've done one thing, I've given it a title, light and sound, I've not put any resources in if I wanted to, and I um, will click publish. I will bring our friend student 17 back into the mix. So student 17, whether um, virtual or in class as they get to it, um, will now enter by logging into their Chromebook or their device that they have, um, making sure they're logged into Chrome if it's not a Chromebook and click on workspace and student dashboard. When that student comes in, um, the teacher is hoping that they now see, okay, the grade four um, light and sound, and they can filter at the top to CC training two, which is on there. Um, and then they can click on it. And what should they see? They should see just the evidence. And we have not put anything else in those resources in there, should they wish. And again, you are building up, but what I wanted you to do and see is that Friday, September 25th gives them a timeline that, you know what, we're working on it for the next couple of weeks. Um, 
as we go through all this together, um, your learning is there, but they don't have a copy of this yet to do anything. So the student will click on start. And when the student clicks on that, they are going to make their own copy. And because we assigned it to student as a copy, they will be able to start typing right away. It's their own copy at the top. It says student 17, 17. And if they go in and they start um, typing here, um, they could add a picture. And because it's Google, they could even add um, different features of comments on the side. If it was Google Doc, it would, like leaving voice notes and all those things with read and write. Um, there's so many things. The world's your oyster once you get into this environment. We're really in workspace providing them that platform. So student 17 is in and they are typing. And we had to just add one item in here and then publish the workspace. So let me transition back to what the teacher sees um, from their workspace on grade four light and sound. You will see right here that um, one of my students has started and I'm guessing just guessing that student 17 is that person. But you may not know at that moment in time, if I click on it, yes, student 17 is that person who started. And if I'm in here, this is, this is my entry point of streamlining my workflow as a teacher. And if I click on student 17 here, I open it up as a teacher. Remember, I'm in a, a educator mode. Now I've gone into that document and I can see that student 17 not only is on the document at the same time, because it's just Google now, they've actually typed. And that's that's handy for me to be able to, to know in that moment of time. So that's again, just um, the, the slides that we linked in. And if I go back to uh, individual activity, it's if you are familiar with teacher dashboard, one of the things that this has is, is handy is that it started. I know they're started, which is great. This is pretty much everything. I want to know that they've started. And sometimes submitted doesn't mean that they're submitted forever. It might be something that if a student submits um, and we can support you in other videos and things like that, giving them feedback and, and they like it's more of a trigger to the teacher that they have, they're looking for some feedback or some Part as part of the process, um, not at the end, say, I'm done, and then we go in and give feedback. We want them to be part of that iterative cycle of feedback through the process. So they might, they might submit it from their end of things. And what does that look like for the student? If they wanted some sort of notification to the teacher, they could click on submit at the student level. Doesn't mean they're done done, but it might be something that they um, want the teacher to look at. And sometimes it's by accident, but you, you did see I had to had to do two uh, clicks to do it. But nonetheless, the students will find a way to submit it by accident. And that's OK. It's a learning experience for all. And when I click in here, you can see that the teacher uh, view has now clicked on Submitted. And I can still click on that piece and open it up. And then right now, for the student, it's actually in view only, comment only mode, suggestion only. Um, they cannot change what they've submitted at that moment until you uh, don't return for final. That right now is kind of a, um, a piece with a par where it is. It will be. It will sit there forever under the kind of assessed column. You want to return for edit. And if you have many students, you can bulk um, return for edit. But be careful returning for final. It will sit there in, in final mode um, and locked for that student. So I'm going to return for edit. And then up here under um, activity summary, you can kind of see um, down here that student, some little categories for how long it was for it, and then individually by student, a little overview. So I'm going to find student 17. You can filter. But I know they've gone into some documents, and they have started, and it's in live moment, so, which is great. So it's also a good indicator of, oh, I haven't seen Johnny in that, in that uh, document for a while just because I haven't. it says two days ago on here. So it might be a little prompt for me uh, to look at. OK, one last example. Um, what we, we need to look at is I'm going to create one more workspace for students. And we have about 12 minutes. And I think it's going to work perfectly because then that will feed into our question time and maybe some prompts from, from Catherine for things I might have missed. So I'm going to call this Grade 5 Human Organ Systems. And I'm going to assign it to um, CC Training 4 or 3. And, uh, and then again, Go in here, science, and then oh, perfect, love it. It's uh, it's there. Save as save as draft, 
and uh, move in here. So same thing in here, without getting too complicated of adding the sections, you could in here have, um, in your workspace, you could have it again broken down by the circulatory system. You could have it broken in um, in terms of resources by adding it in kind of section by section. But for the simplicity of why we're here today, I'm gonna click um, evidence card and I have created um, a, another slide deck um, that does um, replicate the light and sound one. It just has a title. So we're gonna say, if it pops up, there we go. Let's give me a chance to search now. Human, Let's see if it pops up. A okay, human organ system is right here, perfect. This is the last piece that I want you to look at, Junior, because we've got, we, um, we get questions about that, and I know we're kind of steering a little bit away from the simplicity, but the next piece is how do we share like a slide deck that we just did instead of individually? Um, how do we do that as a group? So the same concept is there. So I will show you what this uh, slide deck looks like. And you can see that the template is, is, is the same for lack of creativity. But you can see that here is respiratory system, digestive system, circulatory, nervous, that type of thing. And if, you know, I might have prettied it up uh, a little bit more before I um, sent it out. But when they create a document, then they will start making copies of it. So just keep in mind that uh, my template will be broken once they start making the copies by student or by, um, by group. And so I've linked that in here. And learning for um, unit or focus on I'm typing up here as it's propped up organ systems. I'm really intrigued by the copy per group. But right now, under all groups, I only have my whole class. So right now, this is going to be my last piece of thing, um, information because we do get questions about it and you might be itching to know a bit more about it. So this is the, that kind of next, next piece, uh, jumping up from one uh, document that is an individual copy to copy per group. So in here, there is the default group of the whole class that I chose when I created. In this one, I might call it group um, A or uh, blue group, blue, um, Group. And of course, if I am doing by colors, um, I would, you know, probably change it blue, but that's up to you. I'm going to put, um, call this green group. Whatever I'm calling this is what the students will see on their um, student dashboard and workspace. So um, I may not, if I am making a group for differentiation, um, I may not call it um, IEP group or something like that because they will certainly uh, pretend, they will see it on their on their the student dashboard and workspace. So they'll see that when they get in there. So on this one, I'm just gonna call this red group and move on from creating groups. What you need to do then is kind of, however system in your head that you want to differentiate is then on the left-hand side, you would have all your classes. So in this case, I created in this training three and it could be my science. In here, I'm gonna pull um, student 17 um, and student 13, it could be, I guess, random or it could be purposeful. And I'm just dragging them individually. I can also, um, one of the features is I can also hit control and hit the ones I want so I don't have to do it individually and drag it over. And then uh, if I ever wanted to pull a full class into a group, I could just pull it by the top here um, and drop it in a new card. But I already have my full class, so in this case, um, I'm just gonna go see if uh, I can not duplicate randomly um, this group. And I'm going to bring this down. I just magnified my screen a little bit. And let's see if I can bring that down. So now I have groups. And um, the students itself, I'm going to go back to workspace and back to my card and click on edit. I've already dedicated a copy per group. And it's in all groups um, from that one. And I may just remove the, the full class. Um, there I have blue, green, red and click on here. So when the difference between this is, I'm now gonna publish this as grade five human organ system. And I'm, the last thing I'm gonna show you is what it looks like for a student coming into that, uh, that view at this moment in time. So student portal, workspace and student dashboard, student experience, there's the 
human organ system piece, they click in. So you can see now on the left-hand side, and again, I could have used the eyeball um, from the teacher view. They are now in the group of CDC Training 3, which is their whole class. They can see it, and they can also expand and see who is in the blue group with them um, on this case for them. And if they click on Start, because it is group evidence, you will be on a document, in this case, with those other three students that are on that document. So student, in this case, 11, 13, and 17, when I click on Start, they may not have clicked click Start yes, yet, but once they do, they will be in the same document that I am seeing, Human Organ Systems Blue Group. And that's what they will see, and this could be then a collaborative way to work on this document um, in the same way. All right, I'm just looking at my notes, and I think one of the examples that I forgot to give was in a language component. And, uh, but it was very similar to my welcome message or my uh, agenda for weekly agenda, is I have, I've actually shared in, I'm just gonna flip back to a teacher view, in the resources, um, I might have called it uh, like anchor charts, and you could put a Google Doc or whatever you want in here, um, and students can access it. And so as you're creating uh, co-constructed success criteria on how to do a persuasive writing piece, you could be typing into a Google Doc while you're talking with your class, and it will be updating in this, in this column as well. So I've seen a lot of people using that from the standpoint of uh, anchor charts. All right, I see about five minutes left, and I think um, we've gone through a lot. So I'm gonna see if uh, Catherine can pop on and uh, see if there's anything that we need to address during this live stream that wouldn't be part of the frequently asked questions. So thanks, Catherine. Yeah, no worries. Thank you so much, Bill. Um, thank you for sharing some really great ideas. Uh, I know I've got my brain thinking on better ways to use workspace, especially with the junior grades. Um, maybe we probably will answer most questions in the Q&A starting at one, but I was wondering if you can quickly just touch on when teachers create a workspace, I know a lot of teachers love to collaborate. So if you had multiple teachers on the same workspace, would it be easy to have all their students in the same workspace or is that really confusing and problematic? Yeah, so I think um, there's two, two ways to answer that question is one, uh, the collaboration piece. So there is, uh, like you mentioned, teachers like to build like kind of master workspaces if they're all in grade four and they wanted to kind of create um, a, uh, or in this case, because I'm showing human organ systems, I'm on the main page here under workspace, I could add a teacher on the left-hand side and then type in the name of my um, colleague. And so we could, um, like I was doing today, build up this workspace to a point where it's almost ready to go. But your question truly is, would then we all use the same workspace to add in all our students into the workspace? And I would say no, because it would massively get extremely big really quickly and hard to manage. Um, so I know sometimes we get questions uh, from it, so you can ask us to repeat it. So if we create this master workspace and we feel it's ready to go, it's going to be a photocopy in the moment, remember, but up at the top here, they could copy that workspace for their own purposes of their own class and then add their students in there. So don't add any students when we created the workspace. Just say, I'll create my own groups later. No students will be in there. And then um, they could just, we could collaborate on making this together. But good point, I really like how it can get big really quickly. Exactly, right, and then once start, teachers start putting in things that they don't own from their Google Drive, permission uh, settings start to get complicated yeah. and it just will yeah. create more issues uh, than convenience. So at yeah. this time, Bill, uh, I think we're gonna shut down and then head over to the Google Meet, which I'm sure you're going to showcase on the slide deck. But thank sure. you so much for sharing um, your ideas. It was awesome. Thank you. And I will point to our awesome team of support before we do that, and then we will prompt them on there. So Catherine, thanks so much for your support and, and for bringing up those, those questions and points. Um, so right now, uh, we do have on this uh, on the slide that you're seeing, I think you can see it now. Yeah. Um, so we have our awesome learning technologies team consultants. So Steph Pearson, Catherine Wake, who's on here, and Tara Potter, who is uh, filling in for the awesome um, Audra Abramitis as well. So we welcome Tara to our team, um, and she's been a great wealth of resource and experience already, so she fits in perfectly. And of course, myself there, you see our family of schools. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you need support uh, moving forward. That's great. And the last thing, of course, is uh, um, this is I've already alluded to. I'm not going to talk about it right now, but there was information on the slide. If you need information, just email one of us. 
And then lastly, I will leave this on for a few moments. Um, we will stop recording, and then there might be a overlap where we are coming into the Google Meet, but this is the Google Meet where you will have the opportunity to ask questions. Um, so you can um, type them in the chat box, or you can ask them um, being live, because we will all be part of the video Google Meet. So thanks, Catherine, for your support, and we'll see everybody as we uh, transition over. So Bill, if you want, you can head over um, there, and I'll stay on and close this up. OK, I will, uh, yeah, I will stop sharing, and I will say bye-bye. OK, thanks. <laughs>